John, I've had this strange lifelong obsession to know what's real, what things in the existence are really there. So my scientist friends say particles and forces and those who are religiously inclined add spiritual realms or God and all of that. But as a philosopher, you look at reality in a little bit different kinds of ways. So help me understand what's real. I don't think I have some really weird or distinctive sort of take on these things. I think it's first good to think about what you started with in terms of what your scientist friends think. I mean, if you ask your scientist friends, are the voltmeters, they'd probably say yes yeah. rather than no. And is a voltmeter a particle? Yeah. No. Is it a force? No. So they don't... That, <laughs> in a way, you mischaracterized what you're, and may, maybe they're mischaracterizing themselves. Maybe when you ask the question that way, they feel they've got to say something. Yeah, but that's or, totally you know. reductionist in, in their view because right. they don't look upon a voltmeter as something other than a construct of something that's not real or it's art. It, it's so does that mean so a voltmeter isn't real? Is it, it, it's constructed. I know, but that's a fu that's a fudge answer. So okay. Okay. is it that constructed? So constructed things aren't real. Construction really don't have the same level of reality that something underneath it would, yes, uh, of which it's constructed. But it's natural to think, at least naively, that there's well, there are there is, there are some things, and then there are uh, some things that there aren't. So there aren't mermaids, <laughs> okay. and there are uh, electrons. Right. So we get but, in the but, hang of that. There aren't mermaids. There aren't ghosts. Unless, you know, some right. Irish fables But there fables is the idea of whatever. mermaids. There's an idea of a mermaid. Right, mermaids. so there so are the... ideas of mermaids, there are pictures of mermaids, there right. are books about mermaids, <laughs> right. there aren't mermaids. Right. So it's very important right. to distinguish the one question, is there a book about mermaids? And the question, is there an idea about mermaids? And the question, are there mermaids? Okay. And the natural answer, you know, which seems like a pretty good answer is no to other mermaids, yes to other... Uh, ideas about mermaids, yes to other books about mermaids. So and then if we carry on like that, so I'm just, at least as a starting point, we've got to get straight what our natural intuitive okay, picture is, good. is that um, there are voltmeters and there are particles. Okay. It doesn't seem like voltmeters are like mermaids, does right. it? No, so, no, but, but, but voltmeters have, a, have a, a, a greater claim to existence. But, but, the, but if the ideas of mermaids exist... The ideas exist. Yeah. That's something that exists. That's something, yes. That's real. Right, that's real. That so we can add real. those to the list. Right. Ideas about mermaids. Right. So we've got, right. you know, but we've already got a fairly expansive. So if we just start with our sort of intuitive, our, our intuitive views, I mean, we'd put a whole bunch of things on the list. Okay. Like particles and voltmeters and chairs and tables and ideas about mermaids right. and ideas about statues and ideas about electrons and yeah. uh, and so on and so on. And then we get to slightly tendentious things like, like what? God and angels okay. on the one hand and maybe Certainly the numbers idea. people would start, you know, but still if we think about it just naively in terms of there are questions, if you're asked are the numbers between two and seven? Yeah. You'd say yes, you yes. wouldn't say no. So yeah. it looks like <laughs> at least the first pass is that there are, you know, we can get a big long list just by asking there are questions. Okay. So then there are a few ways to go from there. We start compiling a list just by asking there are questions. Okay. And I think that's a good place to start. Oh, I like that. Are the, and then... <laughs> put a noun there, yeah, a right. common noun, and right. then see what people say. Right. And I think you'll find convergence on, you know, if you ask physicists, are right. the voltmeters, they'll say, of course there are. Yeah, right. Then one thing to think about is, is there something to, that's added to the question, are such and such real? You know, having said there are tables, is there some further question, are tables real? And it doesn't sound like it to me. I mean, if you really think there are tables, you seem to be done with the question, are tables real? It's not like, well, we've discovered there are tables, now let's move on to this extra question. Yeah, yeah. Are there these tables that there are real or are they non-real? And it seems if there are some, then they're real. So I don't think the question, are tables real? On the face of it, at least, it doesn't add anything to the question, are the tables? And on the face of it, everyone thinks there are tables. And on the face of it, it's a really tough, 
You wouldn't really expect a scientist to come along and have some really good argument <laughs> that there aren't tables. Okay. But, so, but there are there is stuff that once you say there are X, that there is a further question whether it's God or things like that, yes. or or uh, yeah. you know you, uh, there are uh, uh, books about uh, mermaids. If you didn't know, there are no mermaids. But uh, right. But do you really think it's for a philosopher to figure out whether there are these kind of you know? Things in the sea that have, you know, <laughs> the upper half look like women and the bottom half look like fish. It yeah. doesn't seem like, no, no. you know, if, if a marine biologist turns one up, yeah. then, you know, we'll change our mind. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's pretty obvious. Right. It seems pretty obvious what the answer is. And it right. seems that we know that marine biologists aren't going to okay. turn them up. So, so uh, what, what, what can we learn, for example, uh, about uh, uh, objects that, um, that are... For all practical purposes, in their microphysics, the same, but have different names for them. Uh, a lump of clay and a statue uh, could be exactly the same thing, but radically called by different names. Uh, a Venus and the morning star or the evening star. You, 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 are those the same? Yes, yeah, so one kind of question which is a bit different to other yeah. yeah, is is the so and so the same thing as the so and so? Right, and uh, so you touched on a, a natural and yeah. question that's been asked since antiquity by philosophers, which is, you know, if you've got a, a lump of clay that's fashioned into a statue, intuitively you think there's a statue over there. And intuitively you think there's still a lump of clay over there. And a good question is, well, are they the same thing? So there's one thing with two descriptions, yeah. like you know, uh, Mark Twain and Samuel Clements. Right. They are not two things. It's one thing with two names. Right. Or, uh, Clark Kent thing is in a way that's not. Yeah. You don't mind me calling people things. Right. But, you know, right. Uh, um, philosophers tend to do that. Yeah. So. Uh, and it looks on the face of it again. Just it's good to get straight what the natural answer is. On reflection, it's no because the lump of clay was around a long time before um, the statue came into existence. And so if the statue came into, if, if you think the statue came into existence just, you know, a few hours ago and the lump of clay didn't come into existence a few hours ago, that seems to be a fairly right. decisive. So that's the prima facie decisive consideration that has convinced lots of people so, that so, they're different things. So there really are two things there. Okay, so yeah. in that case, you have every atom can be exactly the same. They are, by almost by definition. Everything's exactly the same. But because the one has more temporal parts than the other... Well, like, let's, let's sort of bring temporal parts okay. in right now, right. but just the, the natural thing to think is there are two things there. I mean, not natural, if you follow through this line of reasoning, it seems to take you to the conclusion, and then you could resist at various points, but it seems to take you to the conclusion. There were two things there, a statue and a lump of clay, and right now, they have exactly the same atoms as parts. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe, Five years ago, that wasn't so, because maybe five years ago, the um, statue didn't even exist, whereas the atom was there and it had lots of little atoms as parts. Mm. And maybe in five years' time, uh, things will be very different. I mean, one model for that is if you slowly take away bits of the clay and replace it, it doesn't seem to destroy the statue. Yeah, yeah. But you could very slowly extract all the original clay and reform yeah. it over there, and right. then you'd say, oh... At that point in time, the lump of clay has, uh, you know, those little guys right. as parts. But at that point in time, the statue has a completely different bunch right, of right, little guys right, as parts. Right. So what you're pointing out is if you buy the, this line of thinking, you'd say it can be that certainly at one time, I mean, we could go through to other questions, but certainly at one time you could have two things that are made up of exactly the same hmm. atoms. I mean, do you think that's... Incredible or <laughs> bizarre or... It, it, it just helps you to understand what reality is. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's further information about how the world exists. And, and, then, and so if we have, you say this table is real, but the table is part of the room. So is, it, is the table separate from the room or is there a table room thing? If, 
I mean, your arm is, we've got to be a bit careful there. Your arm is part of you, but uh, there isn't this other thing that's you plus your arm. I mean, you plus your arm is you, isn't it? Right. So, right. And the, you without we, your arm is you. Well, the, we're, we're playing around with, with without. I mean, hmm. there's the thing right hmm. now, which is, I can outline that way. Yeah. That's not you. Because that that thing that seems to be a thing. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a, it's a it's a a part of you that's almost as big as you, but doesn't take up the region of space where your arm is. <laughs> right. That guy, uh, let's call it little you. Little you isn't you. Little you is part of you. Okay. Yeah. So okay. now you without if you mean by you without your arm, little you, then you without your arm isn't you. If by you without your arm, you mean what would happen to you, how things would be if I uh, uh, insidiously chopped your arm off uh-huh. or something, then of course you'd still carry on existing. But right now, intuitive, I mean, it seems quite natural to think there's this thing, you without your arm in the sense that I defined it, and that isn't you. Okay, so, so if we... If we but but, if we, but, but you, one thing that you're getting at is you've got these intuitive answers to there are questions. And then some there are questions are tricky. Uh, you know, maybe are the mermaids isn't tricky, but are the, you know, maybe some other sort of, you know, uh, sciencey or biological questions are tricky, you know. And they're not things that philosophers can, are going to have very much to say about, you know. Um, But there are more general abstract questions that maybe uh, they might have something to say about. One sort of philosopher says, well, actually our naive reactions are excessive. Uh, Actually, it's it's not, there aren't really, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we say there are. You know, we say there are holes in the cheese, <laughs> but the cheese is perforated, all right, but there aren't holes. There is just perforated cheese. So you're adding too many things in if you have the cheese and the holes. You should just have, stick with your perforated cheese and not really think there are holes. I mean, so we're taking a liberty when we say there are holes. So there's that sort of philosopher, let's call him or her the subtractor who's taking the ordinary there are claims and paring it down and saying, no, you're, we're taking a liberty by saying there are holes. There are holes. There are just perforated things. And then there's another kind of philosopher, and I'm a bit more the second kind, who's an adder, uh, who uh, <laughs> takes the thing and then says, there are even more things than, 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 than have been dreamt of by mm-hmm. naivete, not less. Like what? Like, I mean, it seems... Suppose we buy the thought that there's a statue and a lump of clay. So we're up to two. You, know, there's, you might start to wonder, well, if you can have two things made of the same uh, atoms at the same time, and I, I gave you a fairly compelling argument why there are two things there, uh, why not have three? Uh, you know, maybe... Uh, it's, um, maybe the statue is also functioning as a, you know, uh, maybe it's a little, very little statue that's functioning as a trigger on a gun. <laughs> so now there's the trigger, yeah. the statue, yeah. and the uh, material of which and, the, and the material of which the trigger yeah. and the statue okay. are composed. And we yeah. can ask the question, well, uh, we can ask all sorts of identity questions. We ask, is the, the material, the quantity of iron or whatever it is, the statue is the quantity of iron, the trigger, and is the trigger the statue? <laughs> and we can run maybe yeah. some arguments that, well, you know, that trigger came into existence when it was uh, used in the, uh, uh, com- in, in the creation of this gun. But maybe that statue has been around from <laughs> antiquity, long before the gun was created. And if you buy that line of thought, you might start to think, uh, oh, I guess maybe there are three things in that case. And now you're sort of, you're, you're on a roll now. You, you start to see that maybe, maybe there are ever so many things and we just pick on some of them. 
and it's anthropocentric to think <laughs> that the things we pick on exhaust all the things that are the world's teeming with objects we can't you know there's so many objects you wouldn't even believe it and we just notice a few of them and talk about a few of them so it seems like uh, a fairly uh, that's a picture that's grown on me so that makes me an adder and not a subtractor if you will what do you think